Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the Hadley uh, Select Board Forum regarding the town meeting and the warrants. Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, just a few things that we want to get going. Anybody wishing to comment on a warrant article must sign in. The sign-in sheet is still in the back, I assume. Um, whenever possible, please read the, pro the warrant completely prior to asking any questions. Hopefully that'll help us move it along this evening. When addressing the select board, you must first identify yourself and your address that you're from. Um, please limit your comments to three minutes so that other members will have a chance to speak to the issues. Please be considerate of the other speakers, whether you agree or disagree with them. Any person shown with disrespect will be asked to leave, and we, we don't think in, or that'll be an issue. Hasn't in the past. The select board encourages all registered voters to attend the special town meeting October 27th, next week, 2016. Uh, we will not be asking for motions or seconds tonight. This is not a town meeting. This is a forum. We're talking about the articles. Um, and any legal questions that can't be answered tonight, obviously we won't be able to answer. Attorney is not here. We're not going to pay for that. He'll be here, though, next week. We assure you of that. We hope tonight's uh, is going to be informative and thought-provoking and help us to make town meeting more efficient. We have a lot of things going on at town meeting. There's a lot of money we're going to be talking about tonight. And we want everybody to be well informed of all the issues, um, pro and con, that could come up. At this point in time, I'd like to ask uh, Chairwoman Molly Keegan uh, to come up. Is this a new one? Good. All right, thanks, Jerry. Thanks, everybody. Um, so first of all, thank you uh, and welcome for those of you who are here in attendance tonight and also um, hopefully there's several people at home watching as well. This forum is being offered in the spirit of continuous improvement. Um, we have heard loud and clear from many folks in town that they don't feel adequately prepared coming to town meeting. So um, we're going to try this. I think it's the first time that something like this has been done, at least in quite a long time, if, they're, if it has been done before. Um, so again, it's in the spirit of continuous improvement, and we would welcome any feedback about the format, the content, um, or what have you. So feel free to talk to any of your select board members or David Nixon um, if you choose to provide feedback. So uh, I want a big thank you to all of the municipal employees who helped prepare for this evening. Um, there was a lot, an awful lot of work done in a very short amount of time, so thank you to those individuals involved. All of the volunteers, as always, the board members, the committees who are participating in the town meeting process, and certainly um, our school maintenance folks and Hadley Public Access Television for helping this evening. So again, just to reiterate, the intent of the forum is to provide voters with an overview and a, con and a context for the votes that are going to be taken for the special town meeting. Um, we want to improve the voters' understanding of individual warrant articles so you have more clarity when you, when you come next Thursday to vote and also offer you an opportunity to ask questions. What the forum is not intended to do is to take any votes, favorable or unfavorable. Um, it's not intended to provide any group or any individuals with an opportunity to advocate for a particular article, nor to speak against a particular article. So um, again, as Jerry said, please refer to your forum handout for rules and procedures. And we're welcome seeing you next Thursday at 7 o'clock at the special town meeting. Um, so just a little bit of information before we get into the individual warrant articles. Um, one of the questions that always comes up on town meeting floor, and I don't see Edwin Matusko here to ask it tonight, but we'll give the information out now. Um, free cash is not yet certified, but our current estimate is $542,315. Our water reserves are $861,643. Sewer reserves, $636,009. The stabilization account has a balance of $2,117,112. The Community Preservation Act funds available for appropriation, $1,681,027. So again, a little bit of context for you as we move into these articles. We also want to remind you um, in part why we're here uh, this fall with some of the articles in front of us. 
And we talked a little bit last time about some of the challenges facing the town right now from a financial planning perspective. One is the fact that we are using some free cash to balance the budget. That is not um, a place that we really want to be. We would prefer not to be using any free cash to balance the budget. However, um, we find ourselves continuing to do so. I will say it is a more modest level than has been done in prior years, but again, that's not the, the plan. Um, but that's the situation we find ourselves in right now. Um, Revenue has also been constrained due to the gas moratorium. I mean, it's something that we read about in the newspapers, but Hadley has actually been hit quite hard by the situation with Berkshire Gas. I don't know how many people have been following it. Um, I have to say our legislative delegation is all over this, and they are advocating very hard on our behalf and all of the other towns who are impacted by the gas moratorium. But it is having a real um, on the ground impact here in Hadley because we have businesses actively trying to move to town, restaurants um, being one example, but other businesses as well. And according to the building inspector, they are walking away or just you know, kind of putting things on hold because they can't get a new gas hookup because of the moratorium. What does that mean for us? It means our new growth figure is more stunted than it should be, um, and perhaps by a fairly significant amount. So that's putting a constraint on the revenues that we have available to fund our operations here in town. And then another area of challenge, uh, ongoing challenge, is balancing departmental service needs within the confines of Proposition 2.5. Yet we still need to make sure that we're addressing public safety staffing to you know, make sure everybody here is, um, puts their head on their pillow at night and feels comfortable, and I think that everybody should right now, but it continues to be a challenge. Um, information technology infrastructure, we haven't been able to invest appropriately in that, which is creating um, you know, frustration for a lot of our municipal staff, and quite frankly, inefficiency. We could be doing a lot better. We have significant capital needs, um, and I think the Capital Planning Committee has done a fantastic job moving, uh, you know, prioritizing and moving things forward, but, you know, again, there's a lot more to be done. And then there are positions that don't currently exist or services that currently are not provided that we find a tremendous amount of difficulty adding to the operating budget within the constraints of Prop 2.5, um, including a human resource function and, again, IT management. So those are just some of the challenges to keep in the back of your mind as we move into the special town meeting. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our town administrator, David Nixon, and he will talk to you a little bit more about taxes, and then we'll get into the articles. Good evening. So a lot of uh, people have asked me how much borrowing are we proposing in this uh, warrant? what's coming up, and what, how's it going to affect my taxes. Uh, and uh, we've been working very hard on this information, trying to get it to you. It's still a work in progress, but we have a pretty good idea of what we're uh, proposing for you to vote on, and what's coming up, and how affordable is it going to be. Just a little bit of a primer on uh, Mass, how Massachusetts cities and towns put together their, their tax rate. Uh, those of you who have been to the public forum in September have seen this slide already, but it's worth going over again because there's some subtleties when we get to the next slide that I would like you to bear in mind. So this is a typical tax uh, assessment for any city and town. It consists of four components. The big base there is the prior year's levy, which becomes the new base for the, uh, for the fiscal year. Then you have your proposition two and a half increase, which is an automatic increase. Uh, and then you have new growth. So anything that, is, uh, that involves a building permit or a wiring permit or a gas or, or plumbing permit. Uh, so new kitchen remodeling, a new building, a new deck, and, uh, anything of that sort, anything that adds value to the property. That is called new growth. And then you have a final layer on top, which is voter approved debt exclusion, 
or in some towns, not Hadley, but in some towns you have override. But in Hadley we do debt exclusions for large borrowing projects that we cannot afford to pay for with cash. And that's that final letter, layer. The next slide that I get to will talk about only what's happening in that top layer of the tax base. So if I could have the next slide, please. <clears throat> So we have authorized borrowing at the last fall town meeting and at the last annual town meeting. We're offering uh, opportunities to borrow for buildings, equipment, programs, services in this warrant. And then we have a library that is theoretically going to come on as well. So all that borrowing, all the equipment, all the programs, all the buildings, uh, are built into uh, our thinking about how this is going to impact the tax rate. You see two, two slopes there. One is the blue slope. That is the existing debt service that you have approved already. That's what you're paying. So our tax rate in Hadley for FY16 is $11.15. Of that $11.15 per thousand, you're paying about 90 cents in debt service for projects that have been borrowed and authorized and approved at the ballot. So with all the other borrowing that we're now contemplating, and everybody is very concerned about it, we worked very hard with our chief financial advisor and our treasurer who've done heroic work in order to make things as affordable as possible. We came up with three uh, scenarios which we presented to the select board, and they chose this scenario as the most affordable and the most responsible for the taxpayers of Hadley, taking into account everything that we are proposing uh, uh, tonight and in future town meetings having to do with the library. So the impact is the yellow or, or honey colored. Uh, when I was a kid, I'd call that honey colored. That sort of made me feel good. But the, the yellow there is the proposed impact at the most conservative terms that we could think about. We thought about a high interest rate, 5%. We thought about front loading as much debt as possible so that we could knock it off later on. So there's, and then we assumed everything was going to pass. So given that, you see that the 90 cents goes up to just shy of $1.20. So, and then it stays there for a long time, for several, uh, for about a decade or so. Uh, so what we're saying is that everything that's being proposed tonight is going to increase the tax rate by about 30 cents, 28 to 30 cents, based upon the average uh, single family household, which would be $313,700. So this equates to the average family uh, paying about $95 per year for the life of all of this debt, which if you think about it is a pretty remarkable deal that uh, you've got three buildings built into here, including the senior center and the cost, came, the cost estimates came in higher. So this reflects the higher cost estimate. Uh, and uh, so if you think about it, that's pretty remarkable that uh, they were able to put this together in a way that increases taxes but keeps it affordable increase and keeps it uh, uh, stable for a very long uh, time. The ultimate choice is up to the Hadley voters as to whether you want to see that kind of increase or not, but uh, this is the scenario that we were, uh, recommend. We're, we're presenting to the town meeting. We're still looking at some of the details and we'll have a solid recommendation later on, but that contour is not gonna change. So that is uh, the big picture at this point. I think we're ready for the next uh, slide. Article one. Article one is a planned adjustment to the FY17 budget. At the annual town meeting, we came to you and we said we hadn't quite balanced everything. We thought that we were off balance by about $124,000 and that we would definitely have to return to the fall town meeting in order to take care of the imbalance, take care of any COLA, cost of living adjustments for non-union people, take care of any adjustments based upon new information coming in between the end of town meeting in March, in May and the beginning of the fiscal year. And then for any program expansion, particularly having to do with OPEB, 
we were going to readdress that at the fall town meeting. So the new growth figures were better than we expected. The state was a little bit more generous than we had expected. So that shortfall that we had talked about of a 124,000 is now down to about $84,000. Still have to address that. So we're going to, the, the first article will be to address that shortfall, provide for the COLA increase for the non-union people, make other adjustments based upon new information, and address the OPEB uh, unfunded liability. Article two is a housekeeping article. Why don't you give me a second? Okay. I think one thing that we might have kind of glazed over kind of quickly is the fact that at the Springtown meeting, there was a lot of confusion regarding projects, who's going where and what can be done. And I think that we as a select board, as well as ad hoc committees and other departments in this town, said if you could please give us to the fall what we'd like to do is try to look more comprehensively at all the projects that were being proposed. Um, we heard the $95 uh, number that you just heard, which is what your taxes will be going up if all of the projects pass. Um, that's all of the projects. Everybody's been uh, kumbaya and getting together to make sure that, that everybody's is issues get addressed and that we have places for all the people to go. So I want you to, I, I want to thank everybody for being part of it. It worked out. I think it was, uh, I think it was a, uh, a responsible for us not to vote on it in the spring. And I think we have a much better plan in the fall to talk about all, all the things. And we're going to talk about them a little bit tonight and I'm sure in more detail next week. Um, one of the things that we talked about regarding town meetings uh, a while ago was trying to bring a consent uh, to, to the articles, some of them. Let's try to bundle up the ones that, uh, that are, I don't want to say no-brainers, but things that we actually have to do, things that make sense that we have to do as a town. Um, so to, right now I'm going to talk about the four articles that I'd like to be uh, put on the consent for next week. That will be article number two, article number three, article number 14, and article number 15. So if you could please go to article two. This is an HPAC transfer. We're going to move that the town transfer $87,161 from the Hadley Public Access Television Franchise Gift Account into an enterprise fund for the Hadley Public Access Television and provide a public educational and government television and programs and services. Um, this is being done so that the money stays with HPAC and doesn't fall into uh, the general fund. It's just a simple thing. It's what was asked to be done with it. It's what is intended for it to be done. This takes care of it once and for all. It goes into an enterprise fund. Article number three. Article number three shows there's, there's balances on some of the uh, monies that we have, that are some of the um, projects that we've had allocated money for. What we're actually doing here is we're gonna move that the town adjust the accounts as printed on the warrant and delineated in Article 3 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant of October 27, 2016 and incorporated reference herein. This is a housekeeping article and what it does is it cleans up old balances as I had said before um, and takes once the projects are done and the money is remained and unproductive, the funds are being returned back to the source from whence they came. There's no impact on the taxes. We're just putting the excess money back to where it belongs. Article number 14, and, and I know Jennifer, this is hard for you to follow. Everybody has this sheet, so don't, don't try. I'm, I, I didn't give you a heads up that we were trying to do this. Uh, article number 14 is a Municipal Modernization Act adoption. This article moved that the town amend by bylaw amend by bylaws of the Code of the Town of Hadley as delineated in Article 14 of Special Town Meeting Warrant Article for October 27th, 2016 and incorporated by reference therein. The governor has signed into law a Mass Municipal Association Act, which contains many provisions promoting effectiveness and enhancing the operations for cities and towns. Two of the provisions of the new law affect municipalities the ability to collect delinquent taxes and other municipal charges by denying, revoking, suspending, or otherwise withholding local permits. 
and licenses held by the taxpayer who have ne neglected to or refused to pay their local taxes, um, which have not been filed in good faith an application for an abatement. The current law prior to this allowed for the collect allowed now is going to allow for the collection of this uh, method, but only after the taxpayer has been delinquent for one year, at least one year. That's that's currently now. It's actually being changed. Okay. So, as David had said, we're going to accelerate this. If your taxes aren't paid, you're not going to get a license in the town of Hadley. We expect to be paid. We don't want taxes to be delinquent for 14, 15 months before, um, before the taxes get paid. We don't think that's fair. And the governor signed it into law that we can do this. And article number 15 is a, a long overdue article. Um, Mr. Brown has a piece of property. Mr. and Mrs. Brown have a piece of property on uh, Chamura uh, Road. We're moved that the town transfer the care and custody and control of a parcel of land referred to as parcels one and parcels two as printed on the warrant delineated by article 15 of the special town meeting warrant article um, uh, October 27th, 2016 and incorporated herein. This is a housekeeping article that corrects an, corrects an imperfection on Shamara Road land and transfers it between the town of Hadley and Mr. and Mrs. Norman Brown. The original article uh, missed a provision that actually transferred the land and the current article will fix that. We actually have to cross Mr. Brown's, a uh, piece of Mr. Brown's land now to get to a piece of par to uh, up on the mountain where we need to go. He came to us many years when I was first a selectman and said, why don't we just swap these pieces of property? It's good for me, it's good for you, and it gives me a clear title to my land. So I'm asking you if you would please do this, it would be helpful to me. Uh, and Mr. Brown has brought this forward and, and I think we should take care of this. Again, a housekeeping article needs to be done on town meeting floor. Unfortunately, it takes up a little time, but we'd like to get that done. Questions regarding any of the housekeeping articles? And if you do have any questions, uh, if you could please come up and speak to the um, microphone that we have here. Moving along to article number four. No, Gooseberry is, is different. Gooseberry is, is article 16 and needs to be addressed separately. Would you like the motion read or would you just like to come and, and address it? No, I can just go. Okay. This article is a simple majority article. It's recommended by the Select Board 5-0 and by the Finance Committee 4-0. Oh. I'm not gonna bother to read the, the motion. If you picked up a packet, you have it in front of you. Um, and basically the motion is a very long way of saying that with the passing of this article, the town can apply bond premiums and use it to uh, lower future debt payments. Um, so just giving you a background on that, um, this is part of the Municipal Modernization Act that was uh, signed into law in August. And there are many um, provisions in there that promote the effectiveness um, and uh, operational enhancements in cities and towns. So one of these provisions provides towns with greater flexibility to apply bond premiums toward the cost of borrowing. So in short, again, it lowers the cost to the taxpayer for that borrowing. And basically how that works, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, bond premiums or discounts, um, if market conditions are, are right, the town will advertise the bid for debt. And the issuers of the debt may bid a low rate, but put more money in the offer than the town requires, again, paying a a premium, and it's a, so it's a surplus of funds. Um, so again, the point of this article is to allow us to take that bond premium, uh, if in fact it exists, and apply that to lower debt payments. Okay, so. Any questions on Article 4? Sure. On to Article 5. Article five is our capital expenditures. I hope everybody had a chance to take a quick uh, glance through it. Um, under motion, um, we, we've broken this down into seven different motions. Um, all the money that you're looking at is listed on the first page, page numbers eight and nine. 
Um, and we've decided to split it up because it seemed to make more sense doing it that way. Some of it's going to be done by free cash, and some of it is going to be done by borrowing. All, each and everything that's being talked about this evening, the borrowing is already in the $95 that we spoke of earlier. Um, okay? So the first motion is going to be to address taking care of um, by cash, free cash that we have. It's going to be $7,500 for Hadley Public Access Television Funds for the telecommunication equipment for the Hadley Public Access. $10,000 from Capital Stabilization Funds for technology for the Goodman Memorial Library. $45,000 from Water Reserves for unidirectional flushing of the Water Division. $20,000 in Water Reserves for the prolonged pumping of the Mount Warner Wells for the Water Division. $20,000 from water reserves for the water valve mapping for the water division, $34,350 from capital stabilization for information technology for general government, $10,000 for capital stabilization for locker room upgrades in the police department, uh, $21,000 in capital stabilization for security door upgrades in the fire department, $16,000 for capital stabilization for the fuel pumping upgrade at the Department of Public Works. $30,000 for sewer reserves for the sewer line assessments of the sewer department. $10,000 of sewer reserves for the sewer manhole mapping for the sewer department. $85,000 from the sewer impact fee account for the clarifier upgrade for the sewer division. And $52,000 from water reserves and $101,000 from the Callahan Well Water Filtration Replacement, Replacement Reserve Fund for the replacement of the water filtration units for the water division. This article draws, addresses all capital expenses that are paid for with, with cash. Um, these are all part of the five-year capital plan and represent the planned replacements and best management practices for maintaining uh, the town's capital effort. Free cash is gonna be used or the uh, enterprise funds to pay for each and every one of these, and there'll be no impact on the tax rate for that. Motion number two. This one's a little, little different. We're probably gonna ask our friend Marlo to speak a little bit to this because it has to do with uh, MS4. Um, move that the town appropriate $390,000 to pay the cost for the engineering and surveys and the upgrades of the municipal stormwater system, including the payment of all costs, incremental and related thereto. And that this meet with the appropriations of the treasurer and with the approval of the select board as authorized to borrow the set amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 171 of the general laws. Um, the talking points to this are that the US government, US, um, EPA has been working to improve the waters in the Long Island Sound. Apparently we've been doing damage to that for a long time and it needs to be fixed. And for several years, the EPA has regulated the stormwater systems for many cities and towns along the Connecticut Valley. Untreated stormwater is being seen as a major contributing factor to the environmental problem of the Sound. In most recent stormwater regulations known by MS4, permit applied for in Hadley and now required extensive monitoring, investigation, and remediation of runoff over a five-year period. Each phase of the permit it has a set deadline and a performance requirement. This is a mandate. This is an unfunded mandate. The first deadline for the town of Hadley is September 2017, and we need to get going right away if we're to meet our obligations. The amount borrowed covers all our compliance costs and associated uh, with this new unfunded mandate. Failure to comply with this uh, permit uh, results in a $16,000 a day fine. The impact on the taxes is estimated to be approximately $14.74 $14 annually for the 10 year average that, we've, I knew it, that we have for the time frame for the borrowing. Anybody have any questions regarding this? Uh, uh, Marlo's here if you do. I just have a point of interest. Certainly. Would you like to come to the podium, yes, sir? Yes, I would. Uh, you have to understand this is a motion. It's inclusive, inclusive of everything, like $1.8 million. But at town meeting, any of those borrowing articles can be 
taken out of context and spoken about. So it's not just one motion for 1.8 million. Any of those can be taken out for discussion, even uh, a vehicle that nature that we're borrowing on. I just wanted to make that as a point of interest. Duly noted. Motion number three of our seven, this is, we're gonna talk about equipment now. Uh, move that the town appropriate $275,000 to pay for the cost of vehicle and equipment for the police department and department public works, including all payment of all costs. The police department is in need of two cruisers to maintain its current fleet. The new cruisers will replace two, will replace two Crown Vic models with over 100,000 miles on each. The DPW requests the replacements of a wood chipper, a skid steer used for plowing the sidewalks and other spaces, a staff vehicle, and a four-inch truck. Again, this is a two-thirds override, a two-thirds vote on town meeting floor. The uh, Finance Committee recommends it four, and the Capital uh, Planning Committee re uh, recommends five zero. Motion number four, school computers. Now really, really smart people would be throwing darts at me right now because if you were to look at page number eight and page number nine, you'll see under the capital expenditures um, that if we were to add the last line, the school technology number of $75,000 and the next line item, which is the network replacement of $65,000, you would come up with $140,000, all you Hopkins Academy grads, we know you come up with that. The school has uh, gonna be uh, moving uh, only $112,000. They were able to go out and get some competitive pricing and are gonna come back with a $28,000 reduction, see you mass grads, uh, in, in the cost of this, uh, of this motion. Move that the town appropriate 112,000 to pay for the cost of the computer information technology upgrades and replace for the school department, including payments of all costs incidental and related to. The computer network and computer equipment needs upgrading and replacement in, the, in order to maintain the educational program in line with today's standards. The school committee uh, recommends the upgrades. The capital planning committee recommends this five to zero. Again, that'll be amended on town meeting floor down from 140 to 112. Motion number five, move that the town appropriate $400,000 to pay the cost of all new eight, the cost of a new HVAC system and upgrades to the school department, including payment for all costs incidental related to them. The elementary school was built without air conditioners. In the warmer weather, the students are expecting are being affected by the high, high temperatures in the classrooms. It's getting up to between 80 and 90 degrees. The school committee recommends the installation of a split air conditioning system to address this problem. Finance committee recommends four, zero. Capital planning recommends five, zero. Public safety complex, our motion number six, public safety complex. Move that the town appropriate $45,000 to pay the cost of the new HVAC system and upgrades for the public utility, for the public safety, safety complex, including the payment of all costs incremental and related thereto. The HVAC system at the public safety complex has developed several problems and in general has become obsolete. The municipal building committee recommends the replacement of the uh, external air units. And we did a walkthrough through the buildings the other day, and I guess one of the things you don't actually think about is the fact that we have a building that's 22 years old there. It's run 365 days a year, and it's run for three shifts. So truly, it's got, in a normal case of business, it's got 66 years worth of wear on it. So they're asking for $45,000 to repair those. Replace those. And motion number seven is a dike survey. Move that the town appropriate $121,000 to pay the cost of engineering surveys and assessments of the municipal levy system, including the payment of all cost incremental and related thereto. The Connecticut River levy is a vital part of the Hadley infrastructure, as important as the water and sewer systems, the roads, the bridges, and the stormwater drainage system. The levy is undergone, undergoing a phased evolution of its critical components. The first phase investigation 
measures the height and the entire levee related to the elevation from the river to a 100-year flood plan. The current phase will explore the surface, subsurface composition and the internal structure of the levee. The survey will provide the town with measurements of the levee construction. The levee was built shortly after the Civil War and was extensively damaged and restored in the, two, in the 1938 flood. There's no real plans or diagrams uh, regarding the levee uh, in the initial 19th century construction or the 20th century repairs. The impact on taxes for this will be $4.39 over a 10-year average single-family house of $313,000. The Finance Committee recommends this 4-0, and the Capital Planning Committee recommends this 5-0. Article number six will be capital expenditure of the fire substation. Move that the town appropriate $2,900,000 to pay the cost of designing and building a fire station, including the payment of all cost incremental and related thereto. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7.3 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue the bonds or notes uh, of the town therefore, provided however that the votes taken hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon approval by the voters to exclude the amount of the pay of the bonds or notes authorized for the purpose from pr uh, provisions of proposition two and a half override so called. Mr. Michkowski. Uh, sure, and Joyce, would you like, I'm sorry, Joyce. Joyce first. I won't take up much of your time, John. I'm sorry, Joyce. Uh, two years ago, we voted at town meeting to sell the North Hadley um, Town Hall. Um, we're in the process of doing that, but then an ad hoc committee was formed this year to uh, find a way, because we own that piece of property. So. Instead of selling the whole piece of property, wouldn't it be wise to take a piece we already own and put a substation on that piece? Going to need a, people feel that we need a substation in North Hadley with time runs. Our fire chief has done um, time runs and uh, estimated exactly. It's of the utmost important that we continue to provide uh, this service to the people up in that area. Um, of course, now we're still kind of on a stallmate of, uh, of selling this building. So there's a few articles on the agenda tonight. And the first one is about this one getting passed of supporting a sub fire station in that area. The town is exploring ways of storing equipment also in the time being if uh, that building is taken down. That's another vote down the road here in a couple of articles um, and what to do with the apparatuses at that point. Uh, while the other new station is being built. So we have a lot to consider on just this one article, but certainly that was our one priority this year is to uh, take care of our police and fire departments. First, I'd like to <clears throat> thank the members that are on this ad hoc committee that have been going to buy the board. Imagine people not being able to hear you. I don't know if that has enough. I don't think it's got enough. Does it have enough cable? It got right to there. That's it? Yes, sir. Well, first, I'd like to thank the, the people that were appointed by the Board of Selectmen that served on this committee that spent a lot of hard hours uh, putting this uh, program together. Myron Chudzik is ex uh, fire chief and uh, estimator in construction. Howard Kosky is an attorney and an engineer. Frank Quadro is a, a local uh, contractor that uh, bids and, and builds big buildings. Willie Danlinko, uh, wiring inspector. Uh, Edward Dukevitz uh, served on a, a fire department for over 20 years and led up the, uh, the emergency service system. Uh, Marjorie uh, Townsend uh, serves on a, a historic commission, and myself, John Michkowski, as their chair. 
we first come up with a, a plan of 100 by 65 uh, foot. After going through many hours researching other departments and working with uh, the Municipal Building Committee and the Board of Selectmen, this has been reduced down to 80 feet by 65 feet deep. In this station, we're going to have this for emergency management uh, system that will hold in the event of a flood, a hurricane, tornado, a place for either warming or cooling. This place will have two separate cooling uh, systems. It'll have radiated heat in the floor. That'll be all in different zones that'll uh, take care of the, the whole building. This building will, will have a mezzanine in it, which is a much needed storage area for not only for police, but for the fire, which, which would, would hold cots and emergency uh, equipment for uh, that emergency. This is built as a substation and always will be a sub substation. It won't become a main station. We have a main station, but we need this backup for protection of the North Hadley section of town. In this uh, lot that it's going to propose to be sit on, we staked it out and there's plenty of room in this uh, area for this uh, station to operate. In, in this uh, setup for this station, we plan to put stopping lights on the north side of the uh, Route 47, one on Metal Street and one on the southern part. That would be locked in and locked out as the engine either travels out from the station to emergency or back into the station. Um, this will have a backup system for communication. Our communication in our main station went out this past year and this would just take right over if something happens to that. But it is very important to have this thing set up for emergency management. We'll have a generator, it'll have a kitchen in it, uh, bathrooms, and a um, shower room in it. Um, I, I would ask uh, the townspeople for their support and which is important to this, in a, a letter I received from the insurance that within five road miles of a fire station within its jurisdiction that a three hundred, uh, I mean a five hundred thousand uh, dollar valuation house, their, their insurance will rise six hundred dollars for this. And again, the road miles from a uh, thousand feet from a hydrant but it's road miles from a fire station within its jurisdiction. So North Hadley folks, are, a few said to me, well, we got Sunderland to the north, we got Amherst to the east, and Northampton to the west, and South Hadley to the south. Well, one thing about it, when the alarm goes off, it doesn't go off in those surrounding communities. And the, the jurisdiction of our fire chief is the town of Hadley. So this, is needed. This, the folks in North Hadley pay for this through their taxes and they deserve it. And if there's any questions from anyone, uh, I would welcome any question and I'll try my best to answer it. Billy's going to be made out of what? I already know this, but I think people are going to want to know. Well, <clears throat> the siding on it is going to be the cement board. Uh, the roof is going to be a 40 year standing seam. Um, building uh, roof, roof design that's been approved already on other buildings by the Historic Commission. We're putting a cupola on the top to, to give it a colonial look into, uh, into the village there. We're, we're looking at to put two insulated glass doors in the front, which would bring in the light that's needed inside the station. And there's also the two 14-foot doors in the front and to the back, uh, on a southerly direction, there's going to be another 14 foot, so you know a vehicle could actually drive right through. This this uh, will house two full engines. It'll, it'll, uh, it could house a future ambulance, a mini pumper, or a brush truck in it. Road. I'm a 
co-chair of the Historical Commission. So I have one question and one correction. The correction is um, first, Mr. Michikowski. The Historical Commission did not approve this plan. You did come before us and we talked about it. You presented to us. We did not vote on it. We did not approve anything officially. We said, oh, thank you. <laughs> we thought it was a good idea for you to go before other committees with it. We did not approve it. I, I didn't say you approved it. You approved that type of roof style on other buildings. I'm sorry, I misheard you. Not, the, not the building. My apologies, then I misheard you. You, you guys liked the concept. That was the concept. There was never a plan when you approved it, so you couldn't approve a plan I'm because sorry, there was none. I stand corrected. My apologies. My question is whether Article Six um, is bound to the plot of land and or the land that the village hall is on. My question is about taking any action relative there to the wording. Is Article Six just talking about a Could you speak and I can't hear you. Is Article Six just talking about appropriating the money to design and build a, a fire substation or a fire substation on that spot of land? Fire station on that track of land. And incidentally, this re reduction reduced the price from 3.6 to 2.9. So Article 6 does bind this to that spot? Correct. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mr. I'd like to give the people a little history about that area. See, I'm the neighborhood uh, advocate on the committee. I uh, traveled with the committee to over 20 sites in western Massachusetts looking at different police and fire complexes and I have a lot of history with that. The first tri fire truck came to North Hadley in 1959. I was 10 years old at that point. It used to be my favorite hiding place when I got in trouble, the hose bed. They couldn't find me in there. I put the canvas down, so. Two years later, my father built an automobile garage and the mechanic for us was the assistant fire chief, Fred Kaharski. My father allowed him to leave any time there was a red fire phone in there when I was 10 years old, I knew when that phone rang, something very serious was happening. And he would leave, drop everything he was doing, get the truck out of the barn, and head to help people in distress. The site itself, the fire station, was built by volunteer help with minimal cost in 1963. And it served the neighborhood 53 years in that site. We own the property, and the big thing about it is the neighborhood accepts the fire engines leaving at three o'clock in the morning there. They realize they're going out to help somebody in an automobile crash, they're going to help somebody in a fire, or they're going out to rescue someone. And so the site is adequate, and it's represented the northern section of the town for 53 years. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to ask um, if it would be possible for wording to be added to Article 6 to make it more clear that this is specifically linked to that site. This is a petitioned article and you can't add that. Okay. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Number 8 and 9 are petitioned, but number 6. So on. David? And we're going to try moving along. We got almost 7:15. So the uh, the article, in fact, does not specify a location for the uh, Hadley substation. Uh, so um, we can we can confer among ourselves as to whether the motion needs to be addressed to uh, focus in on there, or if, do we like it the way it's written? So we'll work on that one. Mr. Tutor. Thank you, uh, David Tugren, Chairman of the Municipal Buildings Committee. Uh, I'd like to thank John and his ad hoc committee for uh, their due diligence and their hard work on this. Uh, when, when we presented our final recommendations to the select board on um, June 8th this year, I, I just want to let everybody know that uh, this was considered 
a type A priority project. And uh, as such, we identify that as municipal buildings uh, which support town required emergency life safety and first response services. So this was our first recommendation to, to take care of the fire substation in North Hadley. Um, uh, John and his ad hoc committee came up with a plan that we thought was a bit elaborate um, through some work uh, with the, their committee and, and our OPM. I think we have a more appropriately sized building now. Um, I do have a question about the 3.6 million versus the 2.9 million because our OPM cost estimate is still at $3.6 million. Um, so I'm not sure what's on the floor next week. Didn't we talk about last night at your meeting that that was for a 100 by 65 building? That was for 100 by 65, that's right. And the building has now been reduced okay. to an 80 by 65? Yeah. So it'll be certainly something we okay. could talk about next week, but I believe that's the answer to your question. Okay, fair enough. Um, we, we also um, talked in length last night about the appropriateness of this site for this type of building. The previous larger building, uh, we had serious concerns over placing it there. That is still going to be the largest building in North Hadley Village. Uh, however, we, we feel that um, after speaking with Mr. Michkowski, uh, we're more comfortable with the location, the placement on the site, and the fact that it doesn't necessarily negate the possibility of selling North Hadley Village Hall uh, with some ample parking at some point uh, to make that, to not tie the hands of a potential buyer, and that was important to us. Um, so uh, we unanimously, unanimously recommended uh, this article last night uh, through voting at the, the Municipal Building Committee. Thank you for your input. On to article number seven, Senior Center, it was submitted by petition. The poor senior center has gone forth and tried to come up with some information available as to what to do with a senior center, where to put it, how much it would cost, et cetera, without any real help of, of professionalism until a very late stage in the ball game. So uh, originally they were using a number of $3.5 million as to what the building was gonna cost. Unfortunately, in the last couple of days, uh, they've received some information that the building is going to be $5.3 million as opposed to 3.5. Again, this has been weighed in the numbers that were provided earlier that the number of $95 for the average house in the town of Hadley of $313,000 would be increased. But it was kind of, a, kind of a blow to them. They had talked an awful lot to an awful lot of people and used the number of $3.5 million. Okay? Um, I'd like the petitioners now, if they could speak to the article, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Jane Nevin Smith. I'm on the building committee. Um, in fact, the number that we were blindsided with Monday morning was $7.1 million. Our committee got together and we are going to amend the price on this motion on the floor to $5.3 million because we believe we can make the appropriate changes to the building design that will still meet the needs of the Hadley seniors so that they can age appropriately at home and serve the growing population. Now the committee has gone out and done some extensive research. The way that you came up with the two point with the 5.3 versus the 7.1 is that you have done extensive service uh, surveys of properties that were of like size in the last and then you've brought other people from the municipal building committee with you along these things and that uh, prices that you have received for like size projects that have been completed are more in line with the 5.3 million dollars than the 7.1. Well, there is the inflation factor, so that's one reason to keep moving right along on this because everyone's telling us that there's an 18% a year inflation, so if we wait a year, it's gonna cost 18% more than if we build it this year. So we want to keep moving with that, and we're, we're really looking at how to give a proper and an elegant but bare bones system for the town. Okay. Now, the time frame on this, you're looking obviously for on town meeting to uh, get that number approved to talk That's about. Correct. It needs a two and a half override, and you're going to be back to the town with some tighter plans 
uh, and you're envisioning it to be $5.3 million. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Questions regarding Article 7? Yes, sir. This is a little tough for me to get up and speak. I'm 67 years old. I guess I'm a gold major already, and I'm starting to use that facility. But I honestly believe the townspeople were deceived with the 600 petition. Uh, they said it was 3.5. Don, we're not going to talk to that tonight. We're going to talk to that next. Okay, time. then okay. I'll just talk about the financial figure. You said 5.3. Okay, but we're not talking to or against. We're no, I'm not, about but I'm just going to give them the facts. Uh, the moderator and the person that got up to speak said it's 5.3 million. I have the OPM thing in front of me, and the figures are on there. 6.6 .6 million for the low budget, uh, high budget 7.5, and the probable budget is 7.1, not 5.3. Okay. Go ahead, Suzanne. Suzanne Travisano, I am the Senior Center Director. So uh, I want to be able to add some context to his point. Um, from the beginning, I just want to say that um, the fact is that the seniors need a new building. We went to the seniors, we asked them what, you know, actually they came to me and said we need a place that has heating and cooling and is on one floor so everybody can get in. And we've worked on this for a couple of years, okay? We've asked for help repeatedly insofar as trying to come up with professional figures, professional designs, and because of due process and waiting on town meeting for the OPM to be voted to come on board and all the rest of that through no fault of our own. We went with an initial guesstimate um, while knowing no matter how close that came in, we needed to move forward to make this happen because costs go up and our building is falling down and seniors are growing older and older in our city by the masses which is happening all over the country. This is about people first. We're a human service agency, so we move along with the best information we have at the time. We, in good faith, took that figure and, the, and tried to inform the people about it and, and ask their opinion, which is a voter's choice, okay? Literally, Monday afternoon, we got the OPM figures for 7.1. Monday afternoon. Can you imagine? Come on, Susan. Okay, so our committee, having gone to six or seven different senior centers, one which we, we most built our design after, our comp, our comp, our design comp after the program needs, um, was just opened in October of last year and is twice the size of what we want to build, and they built it for $7.1 million, okay? When we broke down the square footage of that that you just looked at and said to the people, it came out to $556 per square foot. I made a phone call to an architect who builds senior centers all over the place just today and said, ballpark, what are the senior centers average square foot going for right now. He said, ballpark, without being, you know, figures in front of me, average 350 square foot a yard. So what we did, knowing we need a, a foot, I'm sorry. Um, so what we need to do is now get the design help to narrow down. We are committed to making a place for the seniors. Time is of the essence because of people and because of rising costs. We felt that we could do this project with either really honing down with the help of a designer the program needs that we absolutely have while being still meeting the needs of the senior population. So the goal is and always has been to build a center that's 
to meet the needs of the seniors and to be fiscally responsible. My apologies that we didn't have a lot of money to go and get all these figures done by architects prior to this, but time is of the essence. We're compromising what we believe we can do based on what we have seen, and we feel very confident and committed that we can make this happen. And Thank we're you. asking your support. Thank you, Susan. Article number eight, North Hadley uh, Fire Station, submitted by petition. petition. Uh, move that the town uh, petition the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Board of Selectmen to take the appropriate actions to construct a North Hadley fire substation on the land presently owned by the town of Hadley, known as North Hadley Hall, Ballfield. Mr. Michkowski? Yeah, that was put on just for reassurance that it would happen. <coughs> Article 6 passes, that's just passed. Over. Thank you very much. Article number nine, North Hadley Village Hall demolition submitted by petition. Move that the town demolish North Hadley Hall within two year period from the date of this town meeting. That was put on for debate of actually what should happen to North Hadley. Thank you. Sure. I just would like to ask a quick, uh, say my name again. No, you're okay. Can, uh, I'd like to ask the board to speak to whether uh, or how Article 8 might negatively impact um, the town selling that property or, or, or the potential deal that's underway. We'll do that on town meeting okay. floor, not this evening, if that's okay with you. Mr. Pipchinski. Thank you. Just another point of interest on this. Uh, Dr. Zagrodnik pointed me towards this gentleman, and I finally made contact with him, and we walked the whole building Monday. Uh, he is the one that takes down barns. He has customers all over the world. He took Mr. Zagrodnik's white painted boards off, replaced them with new boards at no cost to Mr. Zagrodnik, and his boards ended up in England, where there's a demand for him. He looked at this building, he said he would take down the whole building. All of the wood in the building would be his responsibility. He would save cupola windows, floors, and things of that nature. It would still be the town's responsibility to handle the asbestos in there because that's our responsibility. But the figure we're talking $140,000 to demolish that could easily be reduced maybe to twenty five or 30000 Okay, thank you. Article number 10. Move that the town authorize the use of the, of the use of the site of the current Hooker School located on the westerly half of the existing 2.763 acre lot owned by the town of Hadley for the demolition and existing structure and the construction of a proposed new library building contingent upon the receipt of the library construction grant from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners and appropriation of local funding to balance the cost of the project. Anybody from the trustees able to speak to this this evening? Patrick Brezzo, director of the library. Um, anyone familiar with uh, the warrant from Springtown meeting will recognize that the content of these articles is identical to what we put forward in the spring. Uh, we believe that after subsequent investigation of other sites that the Hooker School scenario is still the best one for us. Uh, and in light of the seniors moving forward on their project, we felt that it was appropriate to bring these articles back. Um, and uh, you know, as a reminder, there is no financial obligation uh, associated with these. It's just permission to apply for a grant. Will you be speaking to Article 11 as well, Patrick? Uh, yes, well, our, the, first, the first article is simply about the site itself, Hooker School, um, showing that the, the townspeople approve of the site. The second article is for uh, approval of the design itself uh, and permission to apply for the grant. I just didn't want to bring you up twice. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Comments? Okay, thank you. 
Article number 12. Move that the town adopt Mass General Law Section 40, Chapter 22F, which allows municipal boards or officers to set reasonable permit licensing fees within a town meeting vote. Selectman Chungla. Um, this is the town of Hadley needs to adjust its permit fees in order to keep up with rising costs and market conditions. Each time fees need to be adjusted, town meeting must vote on the adjustment. As a space and time saver, the town may wish to adopt MLG Chapter 40, Section 22F, which allows municipal boards or officers to set reasonable permit and license fees without a town meeting vote. So that was number 12. Any questions on that one? So that we don't have to keep coming back to town meeting, that we can just increase the fees as we see need to? Adjust, them. adjust them as we need to. And then Article 13 is your list of um, amended fees and uh, from going from one to the other of ones that we are adjusting. Um, and they're all spelled out for you on which ones we want to adjust and increase. Not by huge amounts on all of them, but some, some of them um, needed to be increased to keep up with everybody else around us. Our, there'll be no need for Article 13. If Article 12 passes, the select board will be encumbered with the responsibility to be able to adjust those fees. If that doesn't pass on number 12, then Article 13 is the actual adjusted, asking the townspeople to adjust the fees as they are now. Article number 14 and 15 we had as part of the consent agenda and we are moving right along. I know uh, Brian West will do a much better job come next Thursday when we see him, have him up here. Article number 16 is Gooseberry Lane. Move that the town accept Gooseberry Lane as a public way as delineated in Article 16 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant October 27th, 2016 and incorporated by reference herein. The Select Board has recommended against this 5-0 um, because the road just simply doesn't meet what, what we think it should be for code uh, based on it being around for the, the short time that it has. I know that some of the information was not made available to the planning board prior to, to this information, but Marlo, if you could speak to the, uh, what you found on Gooseberry Lane that recommended against it being accepted. I'm sorry, Mr. Weshkevitz, first. He feels you'll do a, a, just a dandy job, Marlo. Mr. Marlo Warner, DPW Director Extraordinaire. Uh, yes, a few weeks back I was asked to go take a look at Gooseberry Lane and, and how it fits uh, the regulations such as pavement. Um, I also had the water crew check the uh, water gate boxes um, and what we discovered there is that the pavement is starting to show um, some wear and tear, it's becoming old. So I rec recommended um, some uh, crack sealing for the road and I also recommended at uh, one of the households the uh, water shutoff box, we weren't able to access it. So it needs to be excavated and, and set back on the valve. But so that, so one of the differences the between this road and what we talked about uh, at the other tall, last fall town meeting is that this is a relatively new road. John, when was this road put in? Uh, you got the date on the road? The what? The date on the road when it was established? No, I do not. Okay, it's not 40 years old. It's, it's, it's severely less than that. And the recommendation is that the repairs that need to be done are approximately $4,600. Between, between four and five thousand. Between four and five thousand dollars. Okay. So uh, the only the only reason we're there's only one water box at one residence. That's correct. Uh, yeah. The uh, we just accepted two other roads uh, in the past because the citizens that live on the road had questions about, we even had questions about who actually owned the road originally. So this article came along uh, because of that uh, issue. Uh, it's a minimal amount of money, uh, although the owner is responsible for it. Uh, it's gonna be up to the taxpayers. 
payers whether they accept it or not at this point where it would have to be taken out of the DPW budget to crack seal that road eventually down the road at some point. Not next year, but whenever it may be, correct? Within the next year or two before it okay. gets uh, too bad. And we just simply didn't feel that was an unreasonable request on such a new road. Uh, I don't know what else you need to say. Uh, what well, Mr. Burkham, the builder, has to say. He can speak to it next week. He's willing to write a check for half. We'll, we'll talk about it on town meeting four, okay. but thank you very much. Okay, uh, article number 17, uh, the Mount Lake Warner Dam. Uh, is there anybody here from the CPA that's able to speak to this? Seeing none. Okay. Uh, move that the town amend the vote taken on Article 24 of the May 1st, 2014 annual town meeting, extending the deadline for Kestrel Trust to utilize the Community Preservation Act funds for the restoration and, pres and preservation of the Lake Warner Dam from December 31st, 2016 to, de to December 31st, 2017. And I guess we'll hear from them on town meeting floor. Uh, article number 18, Hopkins Academy playing fields. To see if the town will vote to transfer $15,000 from the Community Preservation Act funds for the design services associated with the recreational purposes to restore and rehabilitate the property known as Hopkins Academy playing fields. And again, we will look for their comments on town meeting floor. Beyond to our planning articles now. Certainly. Article number 19, Planning Board. Trying to delegate your authority? Right, he's looking for your job. <laughs> no. Article 19 is, looks, should look familiar to anybody who's been at the town meeting for the last two years. It is about con con combining tables 4.1 and 4.2 in the zoning bylaw and through a variety of, for lack of a term, typo errors, we finally have this right. And when the zoning bylaw was adopted back in 1961 or so or 60, there was two tables, 4.1, 4.2, and for the life of the planning board, we can't really understand why. We have guesses, but none of them really make sense because the dimensions and coverages and the information in the two of them are very similar. Um, so we've combined them into one new table for, and that's all this is. The next three articles, um, articles 20, 21, and 22 were adopted roughly about a dozen years ago over the course of maybe a year or two, home occupations on Article 20, bed and breakfast on 21, and accessory apartment in Article 22. The planning board was getting into uncharted waters on each of these. We didn't know what kind of issues might arise, so we put forward in each of the, zone, each of the three articles that they would have to be renewed on anywhere between one, two, three to five year periods of time. That's Sounded great, um, however, I would say the vast majority of the applicants, the, the burden was upon the applicant to come back for a renewal. Some of them have, I would say the majority have not. Um, many have come back for at least one renewal, but they're supposed to come back repeatedly. Of the multiple, I couldn't give you a number, excess of those three special permits, accessory apartment, home occupation, and bed and breakfast, we are only, and the whole idea behind the renewal was to make sure if there was an issue, we could stop it and it wouldn't get out of hand. Out of all these special permits, I believe there was only one complaint in the last 12 years. And it was a minor complaint that was addressed and it was renewed again. So the whole idea behind here is just to get rid of the renewal. It's special permit is issued once and the zoning enforcement officer will, will be responsible to follow through if there are complaints about it. And that's it. Thanks, Mr. Maximowski. Are you guys in a posted meeting by any chance or no? You're not posted for today, are you? No. 
Okay, thank you. I was just wondering if you'd like to talk to Marlo regarding the road or not. I'm on, on Gooseberry. But if you're not in a post meeting, you certainly can't. Okay, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this evening. Thank you very much for coming out. We hope. Can I speak about Article 1? Seven, $17 million and no one asked a question about it. That's okay now. But next, next Thursday is when we can talk about it all you want. Tell them the truth. they got to get this information. This is unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming this evening. We really appreciate your help and support. We look forward to everybody joining us on the 27th uh, when we can have further discussion regarding all the articles. Thank you again.